One of the weird things about having a YouTube channel that, well, one that people actually watch now, anyway, is that you just get emails with people wanting to send you stuff. Sometimes they want you to advertise things, and sometimes they just want to give you a product to review. Um, and there's a big difference between those two types of offers, and honestly, I turned down most of both types of offers. But in today's video, I was actually really intrigued by this from Minis Forum, because this is an entire PC right here in this little box. I haven't it op opened it yet. We're gonna do that here in just a second. But then I also need to think about, okay, so I'm gonna open the box, what am I gonna do with it? I've never reviewed a little mini PC, although the idea of a little, an entire computer, like the whole box, it's packaging and everything, is a tiny fraction of my PC right here. Like, honestly, this is smaller than I think just the graphics card. <laughs> anyway, so what am I gonna do with this? Well, I was intrigued with this one because I've actually turned down other mini PC reviews on the channel. Because this one comes with a, um, a Radeon, what is it? A 680M mobile GPU. Because when I think about what is the topic of my channel, yes, it's about computers, but not just computers in general, which is why I turned down a lot of other types of sponsorships. I think this channel is about the gaming performance of computer hardware, and specifically focusing on GPUs, but just things in that type of a niche. So when I saw that this one actually had a GPU in it that might be able to play some games, I thought, okay, let's talk about this thing, let's unbox it, and actually plug it in. And despite this maybe not being ideal for gaming, guys, I mean, you don't buy a tiny mini PC for, to have the highest end gaming experience. Let's check what kind of gaming experience could you get. What games can it run at what settings, all of that. But let's unbox this thing and talk about the specs a little bit. All right, now I was trying to figure out how much this costs. They didn't actually tell me in the email, so I went ahead and looked at their website, and it looks like for the configuration I'm getting here, well, first of all, this is the UM690 from Minis Forum, and it has the 6900HX Ryzen 9 mobile processor, uh, which is eight core, 16 thread mobile, but mobile processor, right? So it'll be running at lower power and all that than a desktop Ryzen 9. And it comes with the Radeon uh, 680M. And then there's different configurations you can get. I was looking on their website, and it looks like the one we got uh, is coming with um, two eight gigabyte sticks of RAM, as well, so 16 gigabytes total, and we'll run and do dual channel. And it comes with a 512 gigabyte uh, NVMe drive. It looks like you could configure it up to a whole terabyte or even two terabytes. And the RAM could have gone up to 32 gigabytes times two, so getting up to 64 gigabytes. It looks like the version they sent me is on pre-order right now. So it looks like I'm getting a, uh, a run of this before they're actually fully on sale, but you can pre-order this on their site with delivery estimated um, by the end of December. So probably could make it for Christmas, I don't know. Um, and it, uh, I think this configuration was about $650 uh, when I checked as of filming right now. So, I mean, honestly, it's got a Ryzen 9, it's got a 680M, and it's $650. Like, that seems like a pretty decent deal. Although, honestly, guys, I don't really know how much little mini PCs like this actually cost. I've never bought one before. All right, looks like we do come with some documentation, which is always nice. Do you remember when games used to come with instructions manuals and, like, the booklets were actually kind of fun? I remember that as a kid. That doesn't happen anymore. I know this isn't a game, but anyway. Now, I'm not set up super well for this unboxing video. I've got, like, a camera tripod right here, and, like, my arms are, like, around it and whatever. So, anyway, don't do a lot of unboxings on the channel, so that's what it is. But, wow, this thing's even smaller than I thought it would be, guys. This thing is tiny. All right, comes in the packaging here. All right. Well, overall, I really like the look of it. Um, this, if you can't tell on the video, is plastic. That doesn't feel like metal. Um, but I really like the look of it. It's, it's a nice black. Um, seems very tasteful. They do have their, you know, logo on it, but it's just kind of uh, small, kind of out of the way. It totally works out. Okay, 
So we've got USB uh, 4 here. Looks like we have a uh, headphone microphone line. Power button. That's probably some kind of a reset button, something like that. All right, we've got the uh, vents all over the sides. Okay, actually, quite a bit of um, quite a bit of uh, in out stuff. We've got two point five gigabyte uh, gigabit LAN, so should have decent speeds there. We've got four USB ports, and we actually even get two HDMI outputs. So that's really cool. On a little thing like this, you might only expect one or not even full size. Maybe they'll just use these. So we've got a couple of USB type C's, four US, uh, just USB type A's, and two full size HDMI outputs uh, with the 2.5 uh, gig LAN, uh, power connector here. Overall, I am quite satisfied with that. Also, looks like we have some little uh, screw things here where I think you can use this to like mount to things like maybe you want to mount to the back of a monitor or something like that I think that's what you would use that for but it also has these uh, rubberized feet uh, so if you're just setting it down on the desk uh, it shouldn't be scratching anything and should sit nicely and stay put let's see if there's anything else in the box okay so we do come with the uh, this is the actual power that will go out to the wall Here's the power brick that'll actually attach to the PC. Okay, looks like we've got a stand. Uh, looks like it even came with an HDMI cord to attach to a monitor. So this looks like more of the little uh, rubberized feet things. Okay, this is a SATA cable. Okay, so you get a SATA cable that goes with the little, uh, little PC if you need it for maybe adding um, another drive or something to it. Oh, and then here's the mounting frame. So I think this is for uh, for actually mounting it. Wow, this came with quite a bit of stuff, guys. So honestly, this thing uh, is tiny, has a lot of ports and everything. Build quality feels good. I like the look of it. Um, last thing to check here, I think, is just, like I said, but not that you would buy this as your primary gaming PC, but could you play a game on it if you wanted to? Let's fire this thing up and see how it works. Okay, first thing I wanna show you guys is I'm really, really excited because I noticed something about that USB Type 4 port. One thing is that it's, uh, you know, you could use it as a display connection. Uh, most PCs like this aren't gonna support 4K 120 hertz display output. Um, especially not even with like HDR on and all of that, but I'm hooking this up to my LG C1 4K TV uh, Which I use as my main display and I'm uh, Really excited that I was actually able to get this going at 10-bit color RGB um, With HDR on at 120 Hertz. I was not at all expecting that uh, to be possible and out of its normal HDMI ports you could only go up to 4K 60 but I'm not really in a good place to film this. I'm gonna try to show you guys what I've got going on here. Now, I do not have this set up in a way that, um, you know, I'm not trying to cable manage or anything like that, but I just plug this thing in. But the USB um, port here said it could go up to 8K, 8K60, so it's like, well, how about 4K 120? Now, I do happen to already have this little uh, adapter that goes from a USB Type-C connection uh, to an 8K uh, HDMI port. So that's what I've got going here, and I've just got the cable running along here because I just grabbed it from somewhere else. But this was able to get us um, uh, going to 4K 120. Now, overall, the setup has been super easy. It had a genuine Windows 11 install, just run through the normal uh, Windows 11 installation, all of that. Everything's working perfectly. I'm gonna install some games and apps on here, and then we'll see how that goes. All right, guys, I really have no idea what to expect from gaming performance. So let's try something like I was thinking Hearthstone. I haven't played this game in years. It was actually Legend Rank at it at one point. We're going to use a loner deck. I have no idea what's going on. We do have the uh, this will be the current frame rate right now. It's looking to try to lock 60 FPS. So it must be V-synced here. And then um, we can uh, reset the averages and 1% lows uh, once we're actually woo. It's actually freezing up. 
Okay, no, no, we're making progress. All right. You got some GPU stats here. It's temperature, it's usage percentage, clock speeds, and watts. Now this is, this is not a dedicated GPU. This is built into the mobile processor. Um, I don't really remember, I don't know what this deck is or how to play this game. But um, we're gonna go with some low mana cost cards and just see what happens. But overall, um, I just wanted to start with something easy to be like, okay, if I wanted a game on this thing and the performance isn't gonna be great, can we at least uh, do anything at all? We can go ahead and check the gra graphic settings. It looks like we're at uh, medium. Wait, you can set the frame rate to medium, quality to medium. Uh, let's see what happens if we go to high and high and uh, see if that did anything. Hey, looks like we're up to 120 frames per second in Hearthstone. So let's, um, let's just play some cards and see what happens. I don't know. Let's, let's use Wild Growth. That way next turn we can get even more mana. Well, yeah, it looks like we can run Hearthstone at over 100 frames per second. I might finish out the game, but uh, I, I think I'll probably edit the video here and uh, try something a little more interesting. All right, I thought I'd stay in the Blizzard launcher and I downloaded Overwatch 2. Now, uh, don't judge my Overwatch skills. I also have not played this game in a long time other than testing it out on one or two GPUs right when Overwatch 2 came out. One thing I'll also mention is with the uh, with the PC right here, I can hear a bit of a high pitch fan noise. It's not super loud. And if I was gaming on headphones I, or had the sound up any louder, I probably wouldn't hear it. And especially if you had this like mounted to the back of the screen or something like that, where it was a little bit further away, I think it'd be fine. Now, overall here, we are now over 100 frames per second. Let's see what happens. And um, hey, I got a kill, so there's that. And um, wait, that used to be McCree. What's he called now? I don't know. Anyway, point is, I'm going to back off and tell you guys about the settings. Basically, I set everything to low 1080p. And um, so it's low 1080p. And apparently, if I'm in skill-based matchmaking, the game feels like I'm not very good. <laughs> Anyway, we gotta got to sell a, a Zenyatta. Oh, I don't remember how to play that game. That's my teammate. Probably shouldn't kill him. Wow, I'm actually very impressed right now. So I know Overwatch is not the most demanding game in the world, but I'm playing at over 100 frames per second. So this is not just a, you can barely play the game and your Reinhardt's out of position. Um, but like I said, low settings. My teammate's gonna hate me right now, but I should actually show you before we switch on to another game. So where is this video, video graphics play? So see, we're at 1080p, and I've got it set to 100% resolution scaling. So I turned off the dynamic scaling, it's not cheating right now, and I set the graphics quality to low. Now I'm actually curious right now, if I set the in-game resolution down to like 80%, um, if we can do even better. I'm gonna reset the averages, so you can see average frame rate here, minimums here, current frame rate here. It's looking like, yeah, we're over 100, 140 frames per second, something like that. Also, I believe I do have FreeSync working properly um, because uh, my, my TV and, and computer and everything just instantly recognized I have a FreeSync compatible display, so that's all good. And can I hook that not too far away? All right, well, anyway, um, overall, yeah, 150 frames per second, good stuff. Let's adjust the uh, option while I play the objective. So what if we actually uh, went down to like 50% resolution scale? So this is just like frames win games, I'm playing competitively. Okay, we are now almost 200 frames per second. Let me reset the averages and minimums. And let me use my alt here real quick, break this Reinhardt shield. Got to make sure we actually win while I'm testing out. Can't let my team down, right? Okay. <laughs> so yeah, we're over 200 frames per second. That's pretty interesting. Now, while not all of the settings can be adjusted on the fly, I think we can uh, adjust some of them. I'm curious what would happen if we did. Now, Reinhardt was quite out of position, wouldn't you say? I don't really remember how to play the game, but I don't think that's how you play the game. 
All right, let me go ahead and play with the settings just a little bit more. So what if we go back up to 100% resolution scaling? And I don't think all of the settings can apply uh, in game. Some of them require a restart, but not all of them. So much of the settings are now on medium. Oh, and then um, I guess we ended that match, but let's see if we can go a little bit a little bit further here. So oh, by going to medium, I think it changes the, the frame rate target and resolution scaling and all of that, which is really frustrating. So let's go back to, uh, let's go back to a no dynamic scaling. We're at 100%. Um, custom frame rate, and we just want to go uh, unlimited. All right, so we're basically medium settings, 1080p, and it's looking like, at least in this room, I'm resetting the averages and all that. We're around 100 frames per second, not always over it, but this does not seem all that bad. Like I said, not every single setting applies when you go to medium settings. And by the way, I understand that I'm on a 4K screen right now, but I just have it set to run at 1080p. And I could put it in a window to see native 1080p, uh, which is what I do if I'm like really talking to you guys in a, in a pre-recorded video about you know how the graphics look at 1080p and all that. But for filming the screen, I think it made sense to grab a um, grab a Reinhardt. I mean, grab a. Uh, uh, a, a picture of a bigger area of the screen. I think that makes sense. And I died here. Overall, I think Overwatch is performing great. Let me try out something more demanding. Okay, Overwatch 2 ran so well that I've decided let's try staying in the Blizzard launcher just a little bit longer and test out the newest Call of Duty game. And you know what? I'm honestly surprised, guys. I just dialed in some settings that are basically a mixture of low and very low. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at it. Uh, so the quality settings here are, yeah, like I said, a lot of lows and very lows with an occasional medium. And then the display setting is 1080p, and I don't have any upscaling right now. This is native 1080p. And let me reset the frame rate counter. We got current frame rate, average, and minimums. So minimums, you know, 38 FPS. I just went into quick play. I don't really play a lot of Call of Duty. Um, but I thought we'd go ahead and give this a shot. Okay, this is not fantastic. Um, but I honestly feel like, first of all, I did get the headshot. And second of all, um, I wonder if we do a little bit of upscaling. This game does support FSR 1.0. So let's go ahead and kick on some FSR 1.0 and see what happens. It doesn't have 2.0, unfortunately. So we'll go FSR 1.0. Let's go to the quality settings. So this is rendering a little bit below 1080p now. I'm going to reset the frame rate counters. Guys, we are well above 60 FPS right now. And I just got that flick shot. So there's that. Anyway, <laughs> how do you feel losing to a mobile integrated graphics chip, dude? Except you don't know because I don't have my mic turned on because voice chat was absolutely disabled for this video because there's one way to get demonetized on YouTube, and that's to feature Call of Duty voice chat. <laughs> At least, <laughs> that would be my assumption if it's anything like it was when I was in high school. You learn all sorts of uh, new forms of, of, you know, scum and villainy uh, <laughs> in a Call of Duty voice chat. Is, what kind of game mode are we playing right now? Team Deathmatch. This is Team Deathmatch. Let's um, find an enemy then. How many play? It's like 6v6, I guess. So that would put a decent CPU demand. I mean, we're not playing the um, Battle Royale Warzone 2, although it honestly might be worth checking out. Guys, the performance is so good right now. Now I'm going to be like, okay, what if this was the best P gaming PC you had and you wanted to be a sweaty tryhard? Let's go down to FSR performance mode. Reset the frame rate counters. And, and let's see, see where we are. So it's very, very blurry right now. I'll, I'll tell you that. It's, it's very, very blurry. Uh, let me reset the frame rate counter again, because we got some, some big stutters on those 1% lows. Maybe it was just dialing in the settings still, so let's give it a chance. Okay, I got shot in the back. Um, we might be hitting some CPU limits, because the GPU um, drops below 100% on those big stutters. So it could also be the mobile CPU. Because even though it's a Ryzen 9, you know, it's not, um, you know, it's a mobile. It's a mobile CPU. But yeah, we're hanging out. We're almost 100 frames per second right now. If I could find an enemy, maybe I could even get a kill. We'll see what happens. <laughs> 
Overall, I'm actually impressed at how well it is running this game. This is more than playable. It doesn't look great, but this is fine. The 1% lows are a little bit stuttery. Like, you guys saw that frame rate spike there? So, yeah, it's, it's a little bit stuttery. I think uh, we've tested this one out enough, but overall, very, very pleased with the results. Let's test something else. Okay, so for our next test, guys, I, I've actually decided, let's try out Warzone 2, because even though this is the same graphics engine, and this is currently running with the FSR 1.0 at the quality setting, and then with that, those mixtures of low and very low results. Now, I haven't actually tried this yet. We'll see how it goes. Um, but what I'm going to be looking at here was, I know that the CPU demand is going to be a lot more in the Battle Royale experience, but I also know that this is a very popular game. So let's go ahead and just drop in and see what happens. We're certainly dipping uh, below 60 FPS in like the 1% lows and such. Um... Yeah, that felt pretty stuttery right there. Okay, now that I'm on the ground, I'm going to reset the frame rate counters. Uh, give it a little bit more of a, of a chance here. Do, do we at least have a gun? There's, there's, there's no gun here. All right, well, we may, we may end up in the gulag, and I just realized F is the, F is the pickup stuff in, in this game. Okay, I was pressing E. <laughs> I'm definitely a pro uh, Warzone 2 player. You'll, uh, you'll, we'll establish that. Okay, 1% lows are at 30, but... I'm not feeling those stutters too frequently. I think we want both of these. And okay, this does not feel great, guys. I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now, this 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 does not feel great. Um, where's the door? Here's the door. But it doesn't feel unplayable. If this was like the best you had, then you know what? I mean. I'm playing the game. The average is well over 60 FPS. It, we get these little, you can see those frame time spikes uh, every now and then that don't feel great. But this is, okay, surprisingly playable. I just got a, uh, a decent sniper rifle, I believe. Yeah, I felt a frame time spike there as well. So yeah, definitely watch that frame time graph if you want an idea of, of how the stutters are going. So this is... This is very much not a buttery smooth experience, if you were wondering. I did not mean to drop my sniper rifle. Can we, can we find an enemy before we go? Can I actually get in a gunfight and see how it goes? I'm probably just gonna get... I, wasn't this a, like a lot of people dropping here? Maybe we'll end the test. I'll, I'll deem this playable, but it stutters enough that you, you are going to be at a competitive disadvantage against... Um, people who have a, a better setup here. They're like, again, frame rate, uh, frame rate spikes. All right, I've decided let's check out some single player games. So this is Spider-Man Miles Morales. And currently I just have everything, well, I'll show you. We're on the medium preset and we're rendering at the native resolution. So medium preset and the display settings are at 1080p and I turned off upscaling. So this is native resolution. Now this game does feature FSR 2.1. I'm feeling a, a few big stutters right there. Now, I this is the first time I'm running this game on this hardware, so I don't know if there would be any kind of um, shader compilation stutters happening right now. I, I don't remember that being a big issue on this game on uh, on my normal PC, but I don't know. Okay, swinging around the city, we're mostly over 30 FPS, although we did see us dip below, and we do see an 8, 8 FPS 1% low, so that's not great. How about we play with the settings just a little bit? So obviously one option uh, would be to go down to the low settings. Do we have a very low? There is a very low. Uh, let's try low settings, and then... Um, did that save? I'm pretty sure it saved. All right. Low settings, reset the frame rate counter. Okay. Well, I mean, not terrible performance here. And we haven't tried upscaling yet. So I am, and by, I know some of you guys are like, not terrible performance. Guys, for what it is, okay, for what it is. I play this game at 30 frames per second on my Steam Deck just fine, so <laughs> this is absolutely playable at these settings. 
those of you on the 4090 watching the video, uh, you know, adjust your expectations for what we have here. You can still have fun on this type of hardware. We're going to try turning on FSR to the quality setting and apply that. Uh, the graphics are still on low for the moment. And let's see how we do. We'll reset the frame rate counter. Okay, things definitely look a little more shimmery out there in the distance. Uh, FSR 2.1 does a good job at higher resolutions. I think when you're at lower resolutions like 1080p, the upscale certainly becomes more noticeable. However, I will say that the 1% low, like the stutters are, there's still some stutters, but they don't feel nearly as bad. Um, I'm actually wondering with the FSR turned on, if going back to medium settings um, would actually be more reasonable. I think the it will look significantly better if we do that. Um, sorry, I went actually too far. I went to high there for a second. Okay, let's give it a second to load in. I think we've loaded in. All right, let's 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 double check. Okay, we're on medium, FSR quality, all of that. Uh, let's reset the frame rate counter. Okay, it, it's definitely fizzily around Spider-Man because we're below the native resolution. But, like I said, I, I could play this. Let's, let's get down on street level and kind of see how that performs. Uh, with the cars and everything. Game actually, you know, it, it looks okay. Things look very aliased right now, but I'm also on a four, massive 4K screen up, uh, you know, blowing up 1080p, so. <laughs> I don't know, guys, I think this is perfectly playable. You could, you could definitely play this game. But the real question is, can it play Cyberpunk? Let's try that out. All right, well, we've loaded into Cyberpunk. I think I'm on the medium settings and we're definitely below 30 FPS. So yeah, I think it went to medium settings, which did have FSR turned on, but I turned it off to get an idea of the native performance. Um, but just out here, out in the city, uh, not really doing a whole lot, but just kind of out here, we're definitely well under 30 frames per second. So we could either turn down to low or try upscaling, and I think we might actually try out both. Let's go ahead and kick on FSR 2.1 to quality. So we're now below 1080p. And let me refresh the frame rate counter. Okay, um, we're now over 30 frames per second. And I don't like how this feels playing on a mouse, um, but like if I switched over to a controller playing this game at 30 FPS, I mean, that's kind of what the consoles do, right? Or at least the... Uh, the older consoles. I honestly don't know how this game runs on consoles. Not very well on the old ones, I believe. <laughs> anyway, yeah, looking like a decent 30 frames per second here. So medium settings, the graphics actually look okay. FSR 2.1 looks a little fizzly around the edges at times, especially at the lower, uh, lower settings. So what if instead of doing that, we went down to the low preset and turned off upscaling? So... Low preset, upscaling turned off. Give it a second to load in. I reset the averages and everything's. Okay, so going down to low did not seem to get us exactly to 30 frames per second out here in the city, but we're not too far below it. And then it's looking like if we did want to use um, FSR here at the quality setting, we certainly could. So now we're low settings. I'm gonna reset the frame rate counter. So low settings, FSR 2.1, getting ran over by a car. Okay, 1% lows look pretty bad. I'm gonna go ahead and reset that in case it was still loading things in. Okay, so just running around here, everything seems pretty okay. Can I stop a car and just like steal it? I don't even remember the, the hotkey for calling my my, my calling one of my cars. Let's do that. I did beat the game, but like back when it came out. By the way, I think the game is good. I know a lot of people give this this game a hard time, but um, is this mine that I just called in? Okay, so we're at low settings and we are... Uh, oh wait, that was not my car. Um, sorry, dude. <laughs> Let's go ahead and drive around a little bit and see how things go, because I know sometimes driving can be a little bit harder on the CPU and getting everything in here but honestly guys this this is playable this is absolutely playable um 
we're not going to talk about my steering, okay? But this <laughs> the game is playable, <laughs> regardless of my ability to play it. Um, yeah, I mean, the frame time graph is all over the place here, guys. The 1% lows are down to 21. The average frame rate, though, is over 30 frames per second. Uh, let's go ahead and actually go back up to the medium settings with FSR um, on the quality setting, because honestly, I think uh, medium does look quite a bit better than low in this game. Looks like driving around the city here, we are getting around 30 frames per second. Let's get back into the city where a little bit more is going on before we call it. But guys, yeah, overall, the, I honestly did not expect this tiny little PC that is smaller than any of my graphics cards uh, to offer a reasonable gaming experience. Because honestly, I'm not familiar with this type of thing. I don't really review integrated graphics or mini PCs or any of that. Um, but guys, I think you could play Cyberpunk on this thing, and I think you could even play some competitive games, especially if you're playing something easy to run like Overwatch. We were getting very decent frame rates and all of that. Um, anyway, let's commit some crimes. All right, apparently that explodes. <laughs> In other words, I wanted to get some gunfights going um, to see how that feels, but wow, okay. Um... This is quite a gun, jeez. I didn't realize I had this, like, exploding sniper rifle thing. That's that's kind of neat. Yeah, I think this is, this is playable. I think I would prefer on a controller, probably. I think that makes the most sense. Uh, what other guns do I have? I don't, I don't even know how to switch guns in this game. Anyway, all right. I think it's a cool PC. I think it's more than powerful enough for any non-gaming, uh, just basic office work or something like that you had to do. And then if you wanted to fire up a few games in your off time and you're not too concerned about how they look or how they run, but can you play them? I, you know, I, I think this little uh, minis forum PC might get the job done for you. I hope all of you have an excellent day. Let me, uh, Take a couple more shots here. Do I not have more bullets? I'm out of bullets. This is the end, guys. I'm out of bullets. Oh, we didn't make it. Critical system failure, but it wasn't the PC's fault.